itu. Got him. My boy. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Charm B. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see what other military topics that we're going to be talking about. Today, we'll be talking about airborne. Airborne! <laughs> and if you want to know about other military topics, like I said, y'all, I'm going to be bringing y'all a lot of stuff with the military. So, before we jump into deep into the questions. I want y'all to meet my friend Sean, AKA Sergeant Jack. Hey gang gang. She is a part of the airborne community. That's why I brought her along because I am not. So I do not want to give y'all false information about this skill identifier. That's hey. what it is, right? It is a skill identifier that you can get if you go through the training, which you're gonna dive into right now. But first, Sean, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey guys, I go by Sean, but I'm actually Staff Sergeant Jackson. Uh, Staff Sergeant Promotable, hopefully, by the 20th of this month, okay? <laughs> yeah, so, um, um, I've been in the military for about eight years, well, four, eight years, and um, I've been airborne for, I'm still airborne at this current moment, but I'm just not in an airborne unit, so, I've jumped for six of those eight years and um, I've been now I'm currently a drill sergeant so I haven't been jumping recently so um, uh, I really haven't I've, I've been in Italy that was one of my duty stations I've been to Fort Bragg was, was my first duty station and um, now I'm at Fort Jackson so um, that's basically the um, basis of my career but now I am looking to broaden myself and go back airborne so and a, a little bit about airborne is um yes tell us what is airborne airborne is a prestige we call ourselves a prestige <laughs> community so um I I can actually tell if somebody's airborne by just meeting them I know that they're airborne or like just by pe how people carry themselves. So, um, I was like, with we, a beret, do y'all wear berets like everywhere yeah. or how does that work? So we wear a maroon beret and most times we wear covering our eye, although, um, the army says different, but <clears throat> yeah, we wear a beret wherever we go. Just as we wear, as a drill sergeant, we wear a campaign hat. All right, y'all, we're going to jump into some questions about Airborne. The first two questions in one, so two-part question is, how long is the training and what does the training entail? Okay, so the training is about three weeks, three and a half weeks. And the training entails, um, you pass the PT test. And so, honestly, they have this little stigma. Whereas, uh, whenever you're doing the push-ups on a PT test, because the, the PT test entails of the push-ups, the sit-ups, and the run. As of now, but it will be changing soon. So, you have to at least get 42 push-ups, but... That's there's male a, and female. Male and female. Okay. Yep. And um, there's a stigma between, um, I guess, like the airborne... I don't want to say airborne sergeants or whatever. Like, if you if the, maybe they don't like you or anything like that, you can get in this this uh, club. It's called Forty One Club, bro. Let me tell you. So if you don't break the plane, I don't know if y'all know how to do a whole push up. So you got to go all the way down, basically, in airborne school. Your chest touching the freaking ground and coming back up. That's how they expect you to. Wow. Yeah, and and you have to do forty two of those. There's been people who have done like 41, well, they've done 60 push-ups, I'll say that. 60 push-ups, but the airborne sergeant will say 41, 41, 41, 41, 41, because they don't want you to be <laughs> in the airborne community. Maybe you made them mad or something, 
but they will freaking get you out. That's that's the thing. It's a 41 club and they kick your ass out. So would Straight you say like that, that the training is hard to pass? Training is hard to pass. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you are perfect in order to Wow. Yeah, you, you gotta make sure you hear that. So make sure you on your P's and Q's. Perfect. And that. This All is the way that down. You want to do, guys. All right. So the next question is, what do you like about it? Um, I like that it's fast paced, and I feel that um, being in the airborne community, I feel like I've been able to push myself more. Like, um, outside of airborne community. Like, I push myself, but I'm, like, not as, you know, driven as I would have been in the airborne community. Because you got all those people who still, like, driving to, like, go get it, go get it, you know, by any means. But then you have other people that are lackaday lackadaisical mm -hmm. and um, they don't really care about certain things. So I'm like, well, shit, I can chill, too. Yeah. But in the airborne community, you can't chill because we got a mission. At the end of the day, I'm a 42 Alpha, so whenever I'm in the airborne community, I still do all the same shit, all the same, sorry if I'm cussing, <laughs> all the same training as the infantry dudes do. Like, I'm not out there, like, crawling on the ground and shit, but I still got my mission, and I'm still out in the field 30, 60 days away from my home, okay? So, like, that, it just, it just makes me feel stronger within myself, and it makes me want to go harder. That's all. So would you say that you dislike Train. that some people treat you different because of your MOS or? Yeah, because, well, so they don't do that in the airborne community. So in the airborne community, everybody's treated as a person. Okay. Like regardless. Um, but in trade -off, I've I've t taken a step back because like, I'm not in control, you know? Yeah. I, I've, like, it, it takes a lot for me to not like, oh, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, when I don't even really know how things work in this uh, sector. But um, in the airborne community, like, everybody's just like, okay, well, we gotta get this done, we gotta get this done, we gotta get this done. You don't have time to think about those yeah. type of things. Yeah. Like, you just gotta get the mission done, and that's the only thing that fucking matters, honestly. Yeah. The mission. Okay. That's the only thing. So what do you dislike about it, if anything? I'm just like, like just being away for 30, 60 days, that's the only okay. thing I dislike about it. I don't dislike anything because I love the fact that we're held to a higher standard. So that makes me push myself harder. You know it's a long time to be away. I've never been away for that long. 60 days. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> I've never been away. 30 to 60 days. As long as that I stayed in the field is on this drill smart crap, okay? Jesus. I don't like that. That's why this job kush to her to me but my kush. original job is kush you know what i'm saying my original yeah. job is kush yeah. uh. all right so now we're gonna jump into once you achieve that airborne skill identifier right you did you have an asi right so you do you have to go to an airborne unit to receive the pay yeah um uh, so it's only 150 dollars pay <clears throat> per month but um uh, you have to be on status so in order to maintain your status, you have to jump within three months. So three, six, nine, twelve. So you have to jump within four four times within one year, and it has to be in increments of threes. Okay. So say for instance, if I jump like five times in January, I'm not gonna get paid for the rest of the year. I'm only gonna get paid for that that month, that three month increment. So that don't matter. Oh. It's like I'm doing. I'm doing things like um, for myself, like so maybe I want to get jump master or something like that. But and if I don't, if I jump five times in January and then like the rest of the year I don't jump, guess what? I'm gonna owe the army back money mm. for the rest of the year except for those first three months. So those five times you say they do count or they don't? So they count on my jump log that like go towards jump master, okay. but they don't count as far as pay. So the army wants you to jump at least once every three months. Okay. Yeah. So you still got your jump status now. I still got my jump status now, but I'm not getting paid. Okay. For um, jumping because I'm not um, I'm not at an airborne at an airborne unit. Yeah. All right. So how do you lose it? Oh, lose your jump status? Yeah. I 
So I guess if you get hurt or if um, you just opt out from jumping mm -hmm. and then you'll go just to, to a non airborne unit or whatever and then take your skill identifier. You can't keep that, that papa, you can't keep your wings if you just opt out from being uh, airborne. Like, oh, I don't want to be airborne no more. They're going to take your wings. Oh, wow. They're going to take them and you won't keep them. Yeah. You're going to be just regular. Even though you went to airborne school and you jumped all these times. But if you just say, oh, I don't want to jump no more. They're just going to take your freaking wings from you. So, you got to make sure that if you are uh, going to not jump again, that it's because of something medically. Okay. So, where is the school for airborne? It's in Fort Benning, Georgia. And when I went, it was in July. Listen, Fort Benning heat is hotter than I've ever experienced. Very humid. I'm from Georgia, so I know. <laughs> First hand. First hand. And you gotta run everywhere you go. Everywhere. So if you're planning on going airborne, ensure that you're fit and you're able to run and you're not gonna just run in pts or anything you're running in your ocp so that means that you're running in boots and the actual uh uniform for the day so that army combat uniform so you're gonna have like the long sleeves and boots and and long pants listen you better be prepared that's rough i'm, I'm not doing it i ain't i'm yeah yeah i'm at the point of my career where i'm past all that but you know what I it's not bad. I can be my, I can be my friend. <laughs> so, what are some some locations that people can be stationed? So, um, my first duty station for Bragg. Everybody go for Bragg. It's the center of the universe. Everybody go for, for Airborne. Bragg. For Airborne, I'm sorry, Airborne. Okay. Everybody go to Fort Bragg. It's the center of the universe for Airborne. But um. You can go to Alaska, you can go to Washington State. Okay. You can go to um, Florida. So, uh, Florida, that's nice. Yeah, Florida. I, I thought about going there, but it's an SF unit in Florida. You can go to um, Italy. I just came from there. Germany. They have, we have SFCs from Italy to Germany. Um, that's nice. That's it. Oh, Fort Carson. That's the last one. So you can go to Fort Carson as well. But besides that, you literally have like, what, six places. That's it. Oh, that's it? Okay. That's it for Airborne. So for somebody like that's in your situation, you are now drill sergeant, right? And you have the option to go back to jump status. Do people typically go back to that? Yeah, so you... You step out, it's just like your job or whatever. You step out of um, jump status for a little second because of like, it's not allowed here, but you go directly back to the, that jump status. And um, people expect you to do the same job or expect you to be able to jump just as you would before, just that so they expect you to do your job as you would before, mm -hmm. you know, even though yes. you haven't been doing a job for what, three years? Yeah. They still expect you to do that. So yeah, people go right back to it because I'm pretty sure after drill start, I'm gonna go right back to an airborne unit. I know I am because like, it's not that many sergeant first classes. It's not that many staff sergeant. I was filling a, uh, a sergeant first class position as a staff sergeant in Italy. So tell us, what was it like your first time jumping off a plane? I get the same feeling every time I jump. Yeah, what is that? It's nerve wracking. Like, I lose it. Hey, I'm like, okay, I want to make sure that I want to... I don't injure myself and I don't injure anyone else. So, it's just like my nerves are crazy. Like, I, yeah. And I don't even know if I want to do it, but I do it every time. But, like, my anxiety is to hear. And um, I just do it every time. Make sure that I do it right, how they train me. And then just jump out. So, has anybody ever not jumped out? Because yes. they were scared? Yes, there's been <laughs> there's been people, uh, well, not in my actual unit, mm -hmm. but in airborne school, yeah, there were people who didn't jump. There was also people who were so afraid that they would hurt themselves while they jumped that they taped their ankles. Now, airborne sergeants clearly said- Tape your ankles? Yes. 
airborne sergeants clearly said don't tape your ankles because your ankles need leeway to move like once you lay yeah. and hit the ground they taped their ankles and they broke both of them broke both their ankles first oh jump oh my god day one first jump broke broke both of their ankles yeah yeah they need so, the <laughs> so i mean there was more like details within airborne school that, yeah but okay so what advice would you give someone that wants to attend airborne school or is thinking about it i would say ensure that you run a lot because that, i think the only reason that i made it in airborne school is because i used to run like all the time on my free time um in, in basic training um i used to run so much that i um i increased my run score from like a 21 minutes to all the way down to a 14 minute and i was beating a lot of males and they don't expect females to be able to run that they quick don't. so i i maxed my pt test that's the really the only reason why i got airborne school so ensure that you're able to run ensure that you're able to do pull-ups because you like if you can't do pull-ups then you have to do like a was it like a, a one minute hang or something like that so you got to be able to hold yourself over the bar for like 60 seconds over the bar over the bar okay. with the chin so hold your chin over the bar within 60 seconds or do five pull-ups so just do knock out the five pull-ups you know yeah. that's easier you know so that be able to do that and just have like a a high um i guess high standards for yourself and because within the whole community everybody got high standards everybody and if you go to 80 second it'll be even worse <laughs> <laughs> i ain't putting down 80 second or nothing but i'm just saying i had some instances because i was in the soft community i had some instances when i would just go to like a graduation on 80 second side and they were like hey why you doing this hey why you doing it you know so the stigma do the right thing <laughs> and be be perfect at it that's all and ain't no walking on our dance. that's all <laughs> <laughs> there's a thing like really y'all see if y'all go airport well we hope you guys try it if it's something that you want to do i learned a lot like i said before i'm not airborne i do have multiple friends including sean that's airborne and a few of my drill sergeant friends that are airborne and you like she said you can tell that they are airborne because they are like tight knit you can tell by how they carry themselves just like you can tell how jewel sergeants you know some jewel sergeants it's like a tight knit community so i learned myself i hope i learned some stuff i hope you guys learn some stuff as well and like I said before, if you want to know about more topics, make sure you drop those questions down in the comment section. And if you have anything that you want to ask about Airborne, you can ask that as well if we didn't cover it here. And I'll make sure to ask Sean or some other friends that I know so I can get those questions answered for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure you subscribe and come back. We'll see you guys next time. Airborne! <laughs> Bye! Bye!